Hi, this is Guthrie Govan. I'm here to talk about legato. Um, a much misunderstood technique, this one. Um, but a lot of us do it to some extent. Basically, anyone who can't pick every note they're playing is using legato to some extent or another, whether they realise it or not. Um, the general idea of legato is to, to get a smoother sound. In fact, that's what the name means. It comes from the Italian for smooth or something similar. And two main components in this technique are hammer-ons and pull-offs. So if we look at each one of those in turn, um, for instance, you might have you might have just played this note, this G on the D string, and you might want to hear an A note coming out. So you literally hammer on with this finger. Um, fairly self-explanatory, this one. Um, basically, the harder you, you bring that finger down on the string, the more solid sounding the note is going to be. Um, and that's about it. That's the story of hammer-ons. No, nothing to worry about there. Pull-offs, a lot of people think of as a hammer-on backwards, but in fact, it's not quite that simple. Let's say you've, you've got this note, and now you want to hear that note. Now, if you just remove this finger, unhammer it, if you like, you're going to get a fairly quiet, insipid-sounding note when it's time for that finger. What you actually have to do is, um, as you pick off, you're using this fingertip to pick the string as it leaves it. So you're almost digging down towards the floor and out. So you twang the string a little bit. And if you've got those two fingers lined up, you should be able to sound the first finger note from nothing. That's a good test of whether you're doing it right or not. So the next thing, I guess, would be to combine the two. So you've got a hammer-on and a pull-off alternating. That's known in classical circles as a trill, where you're basically just alternating between two notes over and over again. And it seems to me a nice methodical way to work on that is to take each pair of fingers and work on trilling between them. You'll find that some pairs of fingers work really well, others seem less keen to cooperate. And your goal is to get all possible pairs of fingers at roughly the same standard. So, just for argument's sake, this is a nice informative exercise. If you start with just your first and second fingers, and work on that trill, firstly, trying to make sure that that note and this note are roughly the same volume, and then working on the speed. And then you do the same thing with every other permutation of fingers. Um, for the less mathematically minded, that would be one and three. One and four. And then the, uh, the much neglected ones, two and three. Two and four. And everyone's favorite. Three and four. All right, so uh, if you're anything like me and the rest of the human race, you'll probably find that that one's a lot trickier than that one. So if you want to practice efficiently, I'd spend more time on this. All right, the thing with the index finger, any trill involving the index finger, this is going to be fine because it's nature's capo. It spends most of its life glued to some fret or another on the fretboard. We almost take it for granted. It's really these three fingers. This is the lazy part of your hand. This is the bit that needs to work. So uh, if you mess around with that for a little while, I'm sure your legato technique will become more consistent. All right, now let's try and slot that into some sort of musical setting. Um, G major seems like as good a key as any. So uh, if we're playing something in G major, we'd be using, logically enough, a G major scale. And because legato is so much about hammer-ons and pull-offs, your goal is to get as many notes onto each string as possible. Realistically, that's three, unless your name is Alan Holdsworth. So a, a suitable fingering might be this. Um, that's three, five, and seven on the E string. And then the same again on the A. And then four, five, and seven on the D string. And the G string. And then you sneak up here, five, seven, and eight on the remaining two strings. Um, so you could just run up and down that scale.
And the thing to work on there, this is the thing that throws a lot of people when they're too keen to speed things up in a hurry. Uh, what, what you want to avoid is... You want all the notes to be exactly the same length, as well as the same volume. So... Now, to start with, you'll probably be picking the first note on each string. So that's something else to worry about. Can you get it so that the picked notes and the hammered or pulled off notes are roughly the same volume? It's going to make things sound a lot smoother in the long run. So something like this... Uh, hopefully sounds quite musical. It sounds just like a string of equal notes. Um, something you might want to do to really work on that is uh, try and play it accenting every fourth note. Now, this is quite a hard thing to do, because uh, the natural thing is to accent every third note, i.e. the first one on each new string. <laughs> That's easy enough. It's harder if you're thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> well, hopefully, you could hear there that there's a kind of four note grouping. And if you work, work at that, it really does your hand a lot of good because it's forcing, forcing it to accent notes that it wouldn't normally. Um, the next step, I suppose, would be to milk that legato sound a bit more by staying on one string for a little longer. So um, you might want a pattern like... Um, where you're going all the way up from the lowest to the highest note, and then down, and then up again. So the whole thing is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven-note pattern. And then try and apply that to each string in turn. slow, that would be... Instant Satch. <laughs> 